Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today is May 19th, and this is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Horsehead Central School District Board of Education. It is the day after the annual election, and we want to thank everyone for coming out. Tonight's board meeting is just a little bit late as we were in an executive session talking about a contractual matter. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite those that are in the audience, if you're socially distanced, more than six feet apart, under the new CDC guidelines for our evening meetings, you may remove your mask, uh, as well as our individual board members that will as assist in clarity of discussion. Uh, at this time, I'd like to turn over the meeting to our board president, Ms. Christine Dale. Thank you, and good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to ask you all to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so first up on our agenda is the um, uh, review of minutes from the past meetings. We have um, item 2.01 and 2.02. .02. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any questions or discussion on either item? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. And any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Um, next is our uh, section for our community questions and comments. So if we have any community members that would like to um, propose a question or share a comment or a concern, now's the time that you can do that. I would just ask you to step up to the microphone at the podium, state your name and your address. Okay. Moving on to section four, our report from our student representative, Sarah. Thank you, Mrs. Dale. So warm weathers are approaching and students are feeling like it's summertime, but we're not just there yet, unfortunately. We are approaching our review for our finals in Regents Week. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> and we are on our way for a Regents Week, like I said, it'll be June 17th is the start and Next, we have our review from like what we had this past week. Monday, our Everyday Heroes recipients had a recognition ceremony, and five of our Raiders were honored, including Emily Holly, Christine Juan, Dylan Maynard, Riley Park, and Marcus Paul. Our spring art show, our spring art showcase was also last week at the Arnett Mall, where our art students were able to put on display their wonderful pieces of art. And at student council, next week we are having our t-shirt spirit week. And so we start with our travel day, sports day, band day, and then of course we have to have our Raider day in there. The sophomore class next Monday, they will be having a bander for the students and to, to sign and to donate a dollar for veterans to thank them for all they have done for our country. Also starting on Monday, the sophomore class Rita's fundraiser will start. It'll be $8 a pint, and they're reaching a goal for $4,000. This will end after Memorial Break on June 2nd. And if you would like to buy and support the sophomore class, try to find a sophomore and buy some Rita's Italian ice. The junior class finished their service project May 6th at the food bank. And this coming Saturday, all the juniors together, not in two shifts, but one shift, will be having their unconventional spin on a prom. They will have their night out at the hilltop where they can interact with their classmates and have some giveaways, dance to some music, and just have some good interaction with one another. The officers have been working hard to make this possible given the time we are living in with COVID. And soon they will be holding senior class elections and they look forward to seeing it through in 22. The senior class beginning of the month also finished our service project where we made cards for the healthcare workers at Arnett Health. And we made over a thousand cards total. And we are also getting started with our prom decorations and putting that together and making sure we're all ready for our prom next June. And our ticket sales will be going up on Monday and they will be going until after Memorial break on June 4th. Our graduation date was moved recently to the 23rd on a Wednesday and it'll be at 6.30, four guests per student. And the rain, date, the rain dates are, following the, are the following days. Project graduation will still be June 26th, however. 
And today we just received our official senior day date to be June 16th for the seniors to come together and have a little get together. The officers will begin to take action and plan this wonderful day for seniors in the future. And the last, not the last week, the first week of June, our yearbooks will be distributed. And it's a fun way to see our classmates and get our signatures and to say our last few goodbyes, especially for our seniors. It's a bittersweet moment, but we're happy for the end of the school year, yet we're sad to see everyone go. And that is what's happening at the high school. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. It's nice to see that activities are starting to pick up and, and uh, there's some resemblance of some normal activities in school for all the students to enjoy. So thank you very much for that great report. Um, so now I'll turn it over to Dr. Douglas for um, the superintendent report. Thank you, Ms. Dale. Uh, thank you, Sarah, as well. You've covered, as typical, our wonderful student representatives cover a lot of my report, but I will have to do a couple of repeats. Um, just so that the community knows, we held a very successful uh, vaccination clinic with the Schmunk County Department of Health. Uh, and for those that were 16 years old, up to 18 years old at the high school. And the second dose uh, vaccination clinic will be in the same location on June 3rd of this year. It's important to remind people that we should follow through if they are opting for the vaccination with the second dose as we are administering Pfizer in this county clinic. Uh, in addition, the district is announcing that we will be running a 12 year and up clinic for our students and their families in the district. That will be starting on May 27th. Its location will be the Intermediate School Field House. We will end up using the upper parking lot at the Intermediate School and screening individuals coming in through the main entry. We will have everything signed. And that also is in conjunction with the Schmung County Department of Health. Please understand that the district in no way, shape, or form requires any COVID vaccination. We are doing this as a public service in conjunction with our Department of Health and for the greater Horseheads community. So please look for that information as spots will fill up rather quickly. From our first clinic, we filled up every spot. Uh, and as we move forward, the district is looking to a full reopening. This does become uh, an added aid to our implementation process and also to safety of the general public. Although we do not require it, it is something we ask everyone to consider uh, as we move forward and give our community five days of schooling next year. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor and the CDC have worked on mass uh, and mass use, and we understand that mass use is uh, sort of on the decline through the CDC's guidance, depending on your vaccination status, location, and so forth. Uh, we at the schools, however, in New York State, just like health cares, hospitals, uh, are still required to use appropriate masking strategies throughout the day and throughout our activities, even with our sports. We've already received a lot of questions that, oh, you're outside, which we understand the science, but the New York State Public High School Athletic Association, as well as the county and state health department have indicated that we must continue at least throughout the end of this school year, and then hopefully new guidance will be coming. So please uh, understand and do not direct your uh, differences with that guidance at the school district, its employees or its programs we would appreciate. We just wanna get through the next six weeks as patiently and positively as possible so that our students can enjoy the rest of their year and also do all the great things that we are starting to open up. Uh, in tonight's <clears throat> board agenda is the approval of the 21 20 to calendar. Uh, I need to make a very public statement on that because we have to work within conjunctions of number of hours and number of days uh, during the year, but the calendar is a little different. Uh, we have the pilot that we can utilize remote days next year if we need to, to avoid 
uh, taking back days, and that's something the district would uh, utilize if needed. Our calendar will also have something new in it that hopefully during all this time will be seen as a positive, and it's for one year right now only. And I stress it's only because the calendar lays out that way that the district will be in full alignment with the BOCES calendar for a February break and an April break. However, please do not think that this is automatic in the coming years. It will depend on number of hours, number of days, and the layout of the calendar. If we can try to do that, we will try to do that because it's a benefit for all of our community being together, especially when families take that vacation time uh, in the future. But I cannot guarantee it, and I don't want somebody to say, you promised us. So uh, just trying to give that heads up. Uh, as Sarah said, our graduation is scheduled for a Wednesday. People are asking, well, why a Wednesday? We have to work. Well, everybody has to work, but we have to deal with Mother Nature. Uh, and that's the difficulty because we are doing 100% outdoor graduation. We have set four consecutive days in a row at 6.30 at night. As I heard tonight, project graduation is on that fourth day at seven o'clock at night. So it'll be a short graduation or we're hoping that we will never get to Saturday. Uh, but we do have to be very cautious about that. So ours is on a first date, first available weather uh, night will be how we make the call. We will look at it to try to determine that weather date for Wednesday the 23rd on Monday the 21st. We are going to rely on a district resident and WENY weather person, Joe Varis. And if anybody knows him, please put a little pressure on him. But Joe has been a very strong supporter of our schools and he's a heck of a weatherman. So we are hoping he will have a little say with Mother Nature. Please, Joe, do not call me tomorrow and complain, but you've been 96% right. So that's a great record. Um, so as it will work, right now, I am happy to announce that we have been given approval that as long as we stay within 500 blocks of individuals, whether they're vaccinated or unvaccinated and socially distanced, and we have four locations that will fit into our graduation program, that we will not have to do any required COVID-19 testing on that day. So it will be, once you're registered, as long as you've either proved vaccination or you're unvaccinated on that day, as long as we follow the protocols. And we want to thank Chris Moss and Peter Bazzetti for working with us uh, and the new guidance has come out because, ladies and gentlemen, we hear it. People have been asking, why are you doing this? It's state guidance. Once the guidance is changing, we adapt and we adjust as much as we can. Uh, we will continue even between now and that graduation time to look at it. But right now it is four guests per graduate in the stadium as we honor the class of 2021. There will be no uh, uh, requirement for testing. And I have to say, I'm proud of everybody that registered with their tickets that roughly 75% of those in attendance are already vaccinated. So that gives hopefully everybody a great sense that this community is doing what it needs, as well as our staff is almost 80% vaccinated. So we really look forward, but we have to give a word of caution. And Sarah, if you can as well to the class officers. The reason why I say this word of caution is because at any time, a student or a family member could be diagnosed with COVID-19. Within 14 days of that graduation, so the D-date line is roughly June 8th, June 9th. After that date, you want to try to minimize so that you don't lose the days. And that's going to be a challenge because we have senior, the senior prom, right, on the 19th. We have that day on the 16th that we need our seniors to still practice that distancing even during that time. Because what most families have contacted me is, what if all of a sudden on that day we show up and we do have to just do the regular temperature screening, but they all of a sudden spike a fever on that morning? Unfortunately, they would have to be removed by order of the county health department to go into isolation and go through that protocol. We have no other choice. Now, the biggest fear is, well, what my child's going to miss graduation. 
the district for any COVID related issue for graduation day or just immediately that a student is excluded, not because of family members, but because of the student being excluded, will have a backup graduation plan that will be like our drive through or walk through. Even in this stage, we just haven't finalized the location for that individual graduate and the student. That's the best we can do, but our hope is that everybody will take that ounce of precaution between June 8th and the date, the actual date of the graduation so that we can end the year like one student told me. And I think this is the most important statement. They said, Dr. Douglas, you know, people want it their own way, but we students want one thing. We want to be together on graduation because if you really think about it, it is the absolutely only day the senior class of 2021 has ever been together on school property, and it's our last day. I hope that weighs heavily. That's what we owe these students so that they can end their senior year on a beginning for others, but on a memory that they are being the first ones on that field. So this is about horse heads coming together and we look forward to celebrating it. If the guidance changes and we are able to open it up, we will try to as quickly as possible. But we need the community to understand the guidelines, help us implement those guidelines and pull that day off as expected from horse heads and to make our county executive, our director of public health, Peter Vizzetti, and everybody in the community is trying to keep everybody safe as proud as we can be of that class of 2020 on that day. And then commence this year, put it in the books, and then turn to reopening full-time five days a week with only medical necessities not being in person at the start of September 2021. So please, ladies and gentlemen of the board, uh, if there's any questions in regards to that, I would like to take them now. I do have a couple other things within uh, my uh, parameters of the report that I have to talk about, but those are the most important things right now. So I'd like to open it up to the board. So just to clarify and make sure I heard this right. Absent in clement weather, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on June 23rd at the stadium would be the graduation. Correct. We will basically be starting our formal announcement on that Monday the 21st for Wednesday because usually within 48 hours you have a pretty good run. If it looks risky and it looks better on Thursday or Friday, we could make that call at that point. Okay. But again, we're going to reach out to a Horseheads uh, proud papa uh, and hopefully Joe Varis has some in, like I said, with Mother Nature. Okay. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank Dr. Douglas for working with the county um, to get the 500 pod concept uh, approved and, and work through. I know um, that there's been questions about that and uh, just I'm, I'm really proud of the district in terms of how it's rolling with the guidance and trying to make decisions that are best for uh, students and parents and teachers. Thanks. Can we comment on anything that you oh, said anything. or just Feel graduation? Free. Okay. <laughs> um, I also just want to thank the district for opening their doors to be able to hold the vaccination clinic last week. Um, you know, although it, it's it's not definitely not mandated and mandatory for everybody to to get it, it just made it easier for our community members to have another place to be able to to go. And, and it also made it easier for our students that were right on site. So um, I think that was very convenient and I'm, and I'm happy that we're able to do that again in another couple of weeks at the middle school and intermediate school. So for everybody who worked to make that happen, um, thank you for that. And I, I think all the area school districts are trying to look at also helping out during mm -hmm. the summer. It will be difficult because this is our biggest construction year. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we offer a variety of opportunities throughout the summer to prepare for an opening uh, as the vaccine becomes more available for different age groups and levels. One, one question, sorry. Uh, the clinic on the 27th at the Fieldhouse, did you say that, uh, 
appointments are required for that or is it walk-in? I'm not sure I heard that. I, it, right now it is currently based to be, we are going to be having a survey so that we can send out the link okay. to those to get them first. So if anybody in the community wishes to, there's a piece in there that there's other people in the family that would like to as well. We just want to give the health department a number as soon as possible. They will expand. And then it's just like the one we just had. Uh, the day before, they opened it up to 12 and over. So we couldn't take anyone 12 and over, but they had extra. We had some names. Uh, we contacted them and other people were able to walk in. So we have to look at it first. We're trying to make sure we guarantee the appointments with the students. And that's why we're locating at the intermediate school, middle school, because the primary age group is either in sixth grade, seventh, eighth. There will be some ninth graders and some high school that may have to come check out and go down there. But the bulk of that population was that 12 year old and up. So folks should, if they're interested, watch for the survey basically is the yes. headline. Okay. That will be going out tomorrow. The one thing about our surveys is when we send it out, most people jump on it rather quickly. So we appreciate that. Uh, please make sure no later than Sunday it's done, but we really need the numbers by Friday. Uh, we can give them one number on Friday and then adjust Monday. So please, as soon as you get it, if you're thinking about it, please make sure you fill out the survey. Okay. As we look at, um, the district. We want to thank everyone for coming out and voting in our annual election. Uh, this year's election, we sort of have to compare it to two years ago because that was the last time we had it in person. And we are very proud that we had the highest number of people participating in our elections across the entire GST region. Uh, in addition, we actually saw an increase from two years ago for those that participated and we want to thank everybody. Our biggest thing is to teach our students, our community that active participation is the biggest uh, amount of engagement that we especially need to ensure that Horsehead stays strong, its future as well. And it also gives us the, the pulse of the public. With that type of a vote, what happens is we also found that we had our lowest no vote total in a long time. And that's a positive, especially when you look at all the hard work that everybody's had to persevere through, whether it's faculty, staff, or parents at home, it hasn't been easy. It isn't easy. We have some uh, learning adjustments to do over this year, next year, the next couple of years to try to move the district forward through a pandemic because none of us have been through that. But most importantly, the recognition through this vote was helpful because it does reinforce what we are here for, to move horse heads forward, to get the school reopened, which we have made an announcement for the past two board meetings, and we are committing to. Our plan is still the same plan. We're just changing the educational structure of it versus the safety and security, and then waiting and hoping that the state does not go in a different direction. We are ready, and we are looking forward to the day that we are either all in person or if we ever had to uh, go remote, it's because everybody goes remote. So the teachers teach one format according to their daily structure. And that will be the two best forms of education with the latter hopefully never happening again. Uh, so we just want to thank everybody for coming out to vote. Uh, both uh, the propositions passed with roughly a 79% uh, approval rating and we are looking forward to August where we expect to meet our uh, estimated expectation of the tax rate going down for the district or at least staying flat. So that is something my team is very proud of and I think this board has done an excellent job. So thank you. Uh, to build upon that public persona, I've been here at the conclusion of six years now going into our seventh year and we came up with Horseheads 2030. And tonight, as we've mentioned before, is the start of the next phase. And the reason being is that we are getting ready over the next two years to draw to a close the first real section of that total project. We have always said that it would take three full projects to overhaul and renovate the district 
to where it should be and match other districts. And uh, we have tonight with us Welliver and Hunt to give some updates as well as what this project is going forward will be the first part. And then it will be followed up with what do we need to do to go to part two of Horse Heads 2030 and get ready for a potential uh, capital referendum in the coming year. So at this time, I'd like to first welcome Welliver and Brian McGuigan to come to the mic and start the presentation on where we are at. And then that will be immediately turned over to Mr. Jeff Robbins and Chad Snowberg on potential of where we go forward. So if the board would like to turn around or get in a position where they can see a little better, certainly understandable. Brian, it's all yours. Uh, good evening, everybody. Am I okay to speak with this? Or uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'll start off by saying thank you for uh, having us uh, join your meeting tonight to give an update. I think it's been a while since we've given a, a full update of where we're at. Um, I know Tom just kind of gave an intro of what this presentation is going to be about. I'll start off by kind of overviewing what our first referendum was um, and what we're doing. We still have about a year and a half to go. We've gone through one full summer at the high school together, um, as well as two other summers prior going through elementary school projects um, and other upgrades. So kind of take you from the beginning of when the referendum started and bring you up to what we're still doing now, as well as what we have upcoming here in the next year and a half before I turn it over to Hunt. So to start off, I think you'll remember, um, we had our first referendum broken out into several phases. Uh, this slide here outlines what those phases were. Uh, we started off with an elementary school phase one project, uh, worked into a district-wide technology project uh, we have our high school project, middle school project, and elementary school projects. So as far as completed projects go, um, to bring us quickly up to kind of where we're at now, we kicked off with the elementary school phase one project, which included roofs, playgrounds, uh, mechanical and electrical upgrades throughout the school district at all the different uh, elementary schools. That was completed uh, two summers ago three summers ago now, apologize. Um, next, we did a district-wide technology project, again, at all of the elementary schools, as well as the bus garage. Uh, this included upgrades to pretty much build a whole new mainframe of uh, data closets at every building um, for the elementary schools and bus garage. It included all new camera infrastructure for security and all new wireless access points throughout the buildings, as well as other uh, techno technological upgrades. As far as ongoing projects right now, we currently have three projects underway. Uh, the first one that we've been working on since I think about the fall of 2019 is our high school project. We'll go over an outline of what we've completed there, uh, what's still ongoing and what's coming down uh, in the future. Middle school will do the same thing. And the elementary school phase two project is just kicking off. Uh, we awarded contracts to that one here recently, and we're ramping up for this summer and next summer construction. So at the high school, um, what we have completed thus far uh, is the Science Wing West renovations. Uh, we call it Area K. It's the old English wing uh, that faces the courtyard. You'll remember we put up temporary walls during the school year. We abated, we demo, demoed, we pretty much gutted that wing and outfitted that, that wing with uh, brand new science wings, uh, new fume hoods, new teacher stations, new uh, student stations for, for science labs um, on first and second floor. You'll hear we are gonna be returning to that wing to do the east side of construction uh, in the summer of 2022. Uh, we've also completed our renovations on the cafeteria, which included an addition for infilling the old courtyard. Um, there is still a little bit of work to complete out there. 
uh, mainly in the corridors. We have uh, wall tile finishes that need to be finished, um, terrazzo flooring uh, infills and patching that needs to be done, as well as site work outside of it, mainly pavement. Um, there's some bollards that need to be installed and really just cleaning up the site work out there. Uh, our plan for all of that work right now is to continue that this summer uh, with wall tile, ceiling installations, terrazzo patching and accent strips, as well as the pavement outside of, of, of that space. Um, that space really converted the old cafeteria layout and reconfigured it completely, added a real nice skylight feature and really just updated the whole space. Um, unfortunately, I don't think they've been able to use it to its full capacity yet, but we look forward to seeing that when, when the time comes. Also completed is our, I say substantially completed, is our library edition. Um, you'll remember from the very get-go, we always planned on getting the library itself completed with the corridor for egress uh, as far as it needed to be to, to turn the space over and get school open. Um, again, we'll be returning into that space this summer to complete wall tile finishes, uh, terrazzo flooring finishes, as well as button, buttoning up ceilings in that space. Uh, this is the addition that enclosed the old courtyard, um, pretty much made a loop throughout the school that's allowed us to tear down the link, which is the next space we'll be talking about. Um, I think most of, most of you have tour, toured that space at this point. Um, we do still have some punch list work, small things to get back in there over the summer and before we wrap up the overall project. Now I'll move on to probably the, the busiest part. You can see that 2021 work is, is loaded with line items and bullet points there. Uh, I don't think it really does it justice. Uh, Tom did mention this would be our busiest year yet. Uh, this summer is going to be jam-packed, not just at the high school. You'll see also at the other schools. Um, currently, the classroom edition is where the old link was. You'll remember we tore that down last summer, began with uh, foundation, steel, and now I'm sure most of you have seen it driving around the building. We've got masonry on the outside of the building um, near complete. On the inside of the building, on the second floor, we have got all the walls framed. Uh, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing rough-ins are pretty far along, and most of the walls on the second floor are drywalled at this point. Um, so from here, we'll be moving on to putting ceiling grids in, getting walls painted and taped. Um, it's sanded and getting ceiling grid in, which allows lights to go in, sprinkler systems to go in, uh, HVAC systems to start to trim out in the ceiling, and eventually move on to casework and flooring finishes. Um, on the first floor, we're a little bit uh, behind there, not schedule-wise, that was a bad way to put it, but we're, we're staggered behind the second floor. We built from the second floor down as far as finishes go. We have all the walls framed out, uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing rough-ins are ongoing now, which should open up here in probably another week and a half to two weeks. We'll be able to drywall in there as well. And more than likely, two to three weeks from now, we'll pretty much be at the same space we are on the second floor, allowing for uh, the planning of finishing uh, the space to continue. Um, that classroom edition is still on, pay, on, on pace to be turned over for the school year. Um, we're actually projecting right now mid to late August. Uh, so we're, we're trying to get it done as soon in, in August as possible because we've got our hands full elsewhere uh, throughout the project. The area G renovations is really the, uh, there's four classrooms on the first floor, floor four classrooms on the second floor that abut from the north wing to the, the old link and the new classroom addition. Those spaces are ongoing as well. Um, on the second floor, we're pretty well um, drywalled out. We've got paint on the walls. Casework is installed. We're just waiting for uh, flooring and ceiling finishes to go in at this point. Um, they'll be putting all of those in in sequence with the classroom addition. On the first floor, we're a little bit more behind on that. Uh, we do have a temporary egress uh, corridor going through that space that's requiring us to... Uh, to finish that out over the summer once the building is not occupied. Again, that space will be turned over for September school as well. Um, then we move into some of the upcoming summer work that we have not necessarily gotten underway yet. Uh, we do do the boiler room renovation this summer. 
Uh, we take out the two old steam boiler system uh, uh, and we put in a new hot water uh, boiler system. Uh, this involves pr pretty much gutting the entire uh, boiler room, uh, setting new equipment pads, new tanks, new piping and whatnot to feed all these new spaces. Um, as we have, I guess, progressed throughout the project thus far, much of the new boiler system pipe runs have already been run in the corridors. Uh, it's been why the majority of the school has not had ceilings in the corridors for the last year. Um, it's allowed us on breaks and over the past summer to get a lot of that infrastructure in place to allow us to be successful this summer. Ongoing and upcoming, we also have parking lot and stadium work. Uh, I think everybody can see our turf field is, is looking pretty nice out there right now. We're going to be completing the track pavement here um, starting up again ne next week. Uh, so in the next week, week and a half, we should see the remainder of the asphalt pavement getting paved around the track and, and up to the parking lot space. Um, from there, we are going to let uh, you folks have graduation before we do the actual track surfacing. Um, we need good weather for that, and the timeline of it actually works out pretty well. Uh, I, the less traffic that's on that right after it's installed, the better. So um, we are going to do that after graduation. Um, other items at the stadium that we're working on is the scoreboard system, sound system, lighting system. There is a lot of head end. Uh, nitty gritty work that goes on with that, making sure everything's going to be operational when it's done. So we are working through all of that, as well as the outbuilding. Uh, the outbuilding, I think everybody can see, has a, uh, all the masonry done on the outside. Um, the interior spaces are all painted out at this point. Um, the roof is on. We're working towards getting the tile flooring done at this point and starting to get plumbing fixtures installed. Um, that space also has a lot of sidewalks that need to go in around it as well as through it. And that, that works all ongoing here in the next month to get ready for graduation. Um, to clarify what I just said, the sidewalks are getting ready for graduation. Um, the actual use of the toilet rooms will not be ready at that time. So um, the remainder of those buildings will continue on through the summer with the intent for the uh, fall sports season to be able to utilize the stadium at its full capacity. Um, we also come back in and do a top coat paving on the entire parking lot that we did last summer. Um, that's going to allow things to finish out. We did make the decision to hold off on the top coat because of all the construction traffic. And I think everybody that was involved in that decision agrees that was a good choice. So um, we will be out there doing a top coat of pavement and restriping as well as all of our final crosswalks, raised crosswalks and wrapping up sidewalks. Uh, next of ongoing work and upcoming work, we have our main office renovation, which is the old library area. We call that area F. At this point, it is kind of looking like a roof on stilts, if anybody's driven around the building. Um, we've had a lot of structural work ongoing. The perimeter steel of the uh, new space or the existing space is complete at this point. Um, metal studs actually began today on the perimeter wall. And from there, we'll start to see that building get re-enclosed on the first floor level, um, which will essentially move into the masonry work. And as we get the building enclosed, um, I think next week we're starting roofing. Uh, as everything starts to get enclosed and dried in, we'll start uh, more aggressively hitting the interior work with interior wall framing, rough-ins with mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and ultimately start drywalling and move into the uh, prep phase to get ready for casework and finishes. That space is currently on path to be turned over in the fall. Um, this is not going to be turned over for school opening. This is a space that will be more like November, December time at this point. Um, I think right now we're aiming for December, but there's a chance we, we might be able to, to better that. Um, with that main office uh, renovations, it will include towards the tail end in November, the final pieces of our site work, which is the plaza entrance space. Uh, entering the, uh, the main office space from the parking lot. Um, they are ongoing with foundations for that right now. Once those are complete, we'll move into structural steel uh, and then start to finish it out with the retaining walls and uh, 
finished masonry that goes out in that in that opening space. Again, that, that'll be more in the fall time. Also this summer, we kick off renovating a major chunk of the North Wing classrooms. Uh, these are going to pretty much act or mirror what we did in Area K already. Uh, we will be gutting the classrooms down to pretty much outside wall and roof. Uh, we'll leave those, but we get new corridor walls. We get new interior classroom walls, new casework, new ceilings, new floors, basically a brand new space when we walk away at the end. Uh, we kick that off this summer. Uh, it's an extreme amount of abatement in this space. And I will show you guys a map to kind of delineate some of these spaces here in a second. Um, what uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of work. So our, right now what we're planning on doing is getting the abatement and demolition done and get our corridor walls put, put back up. And whatever does not get finished gets completed on second shift after school is out um, during the school year. Uh, as far as we need to maintain our corridors for students to circulate throughout the building between the north wing and the south wing through our new classroom uh, addition. That right there, I think what Tom said was pretty accurate. That is a big chunk of work for us to take on at, at one school here this, this upcoming six months. So uh, it's going to be a wild ride, but uh, we feel we've got the team in place to pull it off. So Upcoming 2022 work, we have family and consumer science renovations. I'll show you where that is and that will, on the map, uh, that will follow the turnover of the main office renovations. So the existing main office can move into the new main office, allowing us to take over the new family and consumer science uh, area. Uh, business wing renovations is really the last uh, bit in the north wing of classroom renovations. Uh, we'll tackle that uh, once the other North Wing classroom renovations are complete and turned over in the in the winter time. And then lastly, we'll move into the Science Wing East renovations, which I uh, referenced in the very early goings. Um, on top of that, at the high school, there is a lot of corridor work as far as terrazzo accent uh, to be cut in and installed and uh, miscellaneous finishes throughout the building, uh, including mechanical changes with the boiler upgrades and and whatnot. This, uh, this slide and the next slide are actually a map of the building. Um, I do have a laser pointer, so I'll kind of just walk through very quickly here. I, I know I went pretty detailed on some of that stuff. So um, what we've completed this far, thus far is our cafeteria zone. You'll see any place with the diagonal hatch pattern is what we have completed. So we have the cafeteria. We've got the science wing uh, west. We have the library space completed. And currently we are working on our area H classroom addition and these, these four classroom layouts on first and second floor are the area G renovations I was referring to. So we'll be turning this space over when school opens. We'll be looking to get the finishes uh, caught up and complete in this red corridor. Um, we will be taking over this brown area of classrooms on first and second floor. And currently we have taken over the majority of this library where we'll be building this plaza on the outside. The business wing is this pink area that we take over in uh, 2022. This blue area is the family and consumer science. And then we will wrap up with the science wing east. On the second floor, uh, again, most of these, the only difference on the second floor would be this, this space right here. We're also taking over uh, this upcoming summer, getting walls up so this corridor can be used during the daytime. So right now, the overall project for the high school is on track to be finished um, without, any un or without any unforeseen uh, delays in the uh, fall of 2022 as originally intended. Our goal is to turn all these spaces uh, back over for school opening. I didn't, yeah. Yeah, we believe we should be done. 
there will be closeout and punch list and things like that after spaces are turned over. But as of right now, we do have a schedule that still gets us to where we need to be uh, at the end of the day. <clears throat> If I can just inter, um, interrupt, just because you don't have a microphone, Tom, um, just to just to recap that is that everything is on schedule as originally planned. We will end when we originally planned and we're sticking to the schedule. So there has been a lot of lot of concern that there's been delays or we're not following the schedule, but we are. Yeah, so track. certain areas have definitely had delays. Um, we've been working with the contractors to put uh the big picture schedule together of basically this, this renovation space is going to take us from this month to this month, moving to the, which allows us to move to the next phase. And right now we're still, we're still planning on hitting that uh, September date of 2022 right. for turning spaces over. Right. Great. Thank Things you. can change in construction, but right now the contractors do have an up-to-date schedule that does show us, getting it uh, pulled off. So it's a very challenging building layout for uh, building a three-year schedule. I will admit uh, swing space was very difficult in this, in this building layout and it's nobody's fault, just very chunked out. And uh, we've had to adapt to different things uh, throughout the project and try to make things or make up time on, on other phases. I think the renovation spaces of classrooms is where we're going to make up the most time. So. Thank you. Did include a couple photos of the finished spaces. I think uh, pretty much everybody on the board has seen these spaces in person, um, but science room renovations, this is a finished science classroom. The cafeteria, um, obviously, It'll, we hope someday we'll get some good pictures with the, the final furniture in there. The library space. Uh, courtyard outside of the library. This is a shot of the Area H classroom edition um, from inside the courtyard space. This There's not many good photo opportunities inside of Area H right now, um, but this is kind of the state of the classrooms up in the second floor. Uh, drywall on all the walls, uh, ductwork being installed. We've got our light fixtures there staged ready to get going once the walls get painted. Area F renovations. Uh, this is a photo of the plaza area. Uh, a little dark in the on the right side of the screen there, but um, you can see the new steel at the perimeter as well as foundations going in to the right and in front of that building for the new ramps and stairs. The stadium outbuilding entrance. And lastly, the, uh, the stadium, the turf field with the bleachers, press box, stadium lighting and, and everything. Any questions on the high school? Okay, um, middle school and intermediate school project. Um, last summer, we tackled the art and technology wing renovations, uh, pretty much replaced two art rooms and three technology spaces and turned them right back into two art rooms and three technology spaces. Uh, they got new finishes, new casework, new floors, uh, new ceilings, and new interactive boards. For Ongoing work, we've got the cafeteria addition and renovations. This is a big chunk of the building up there on the back side. Um, we currently have the majority of the demolition done. We do still have some slab demolition and replacement to do. Um, but the old courtyard is no longer a courtyard. We do have the uh, slab on grade poured in there. The new structural steel is installed. Uh, the roof is ongoing to get that dried in. Um, and a lot of the upper walls that are up on the roof level are in the midst of being demoed and uh, framed back in at this point. Uh, a lot of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing rough-ins are going. We've got ductwork started going up this week. Um, a lot of conduit being run. 
and roof drains, plumbing feeds in the kitchen are ongoing. And just at the end of last week, the Mason started assembling new walls in the kitchen space. Um, we're still in the pretty early goings of the cafeteria space at this point. Um, but it's thus far, it, it, the schedule has progressed as expected. Um, so we're, we're hopeful we're going to maintain schedule there. And that is turn, scheduled to be turned over um, in the fall as well after school is open. Um, this upcoming summer, we're tackling three more aspects to this project. So at the end of June, we'll take over uh, the science wing on the second floor. We take over three uh, seventh grade science classrooms and three eighth grade classrooms. And again, we will essentially, we'll, we'll leave the corridor walls, but we will be taking down a lot of the interior walls, um, building new prep rooms, putting in new casework, new interactive boards, new flooring, new unit ventilators, and, uh, and renovate that over the summer. That is a very tight schedule up there. Um, we've worked with the administrative team to have a contingency plan to turn over three of the rooms when school opens instead of all six. It is just a contingency plan at this time to uh, make sure we don't put ourselves in a bad spot. Uh, we'll also be working on the south parking lot. Uh, we pretty much replace all the pavement out there and uh, some of the utilities that go with it. Uh, that'll again begin in June. And lastly, we do do a new canopy on the field house entrance. We add on to the existing canopy that's already there with new sidewalks going around the, the parking lot. Um, I did include the phasing map for this as well. This is the upper floor. Uh, the purple area is our cafeteria. We are pretty much renovating that entire space right now with temporary walls around the perimeter. This yellow section is a exterior walkway. We can't take over until summer for egress issues. Uh, we actually remove that walkway and pour a new one. The field house entrance canopy is outlined up here. And the science wing renovation is down here. And we will be on both floors for that, needing to tear the ceilings out on the, on the ground floor. The art and tech rooms uh, finished spaces uh, this is one of the art rooms when we were done um, and the technology shop room uh, when we were completed. Uh, all new butcher block tops in both spaces and uh, yeah, pretty nice spaces in the end. So again, this overall project, as far as a overall phasing goes, this project is anticipated to be uh, completed in the fall and then close out will uh, close out and punch list and final completions will be uh, lingering on through probably December or January as, as, as far as the closing out of it goes. Uh, this is a picture of the cafeteria renovation. This particular piece is where the old courtyard used to be. So all that red steel is brand new steel. Uh, roof decking has been put on and roofing is ongoing at this point. And this picture is of the mason starting to lay walls in the kitchen space. The last phase I'm gonna hit is the elementary school phase two project. Um, we have not actually, oh, Warren. I just wanted to ask one thing on the middle school. Yep. I was asked if there's gonna be any fancy features in the ceiling of the cafeteria at the middle school. I think I can answer this. So um, up here where you see this end cap, that is mirrored on both sides of, of the cafeteria. And that is actually gonna be uh, like glass windows, correct? Pretty big glass windows. So this that was their um, take on getting the natural light in there. Um, so they're not gonna have necessarily a skylight or anything, but the intent of that is to essentially provide the and, and then these trusses do remain exposed from down below. Uh, 
Thank you, that's all. So the last phase we're going to be doing as part of this referendum is the elementary school phase two. Uh, we don't have any boots on the ground yet on this. We're in the, the paperwork, scheduling, meeting, getting every, all of our ducks in a row phase for this one. But right here at the end of June, we will be tackling big flats. We do a classroom wing renovation uh, to address uh, many things, uh, old casework, uh, new plumbing, as far as the, the sinks within the casework, new unit ventilators within that wing, new flooring, new ceilings, new finishes. Um, we'll also be working on the parking lot there, uh, different aspects of it. There's some sidewalks we'll be doing, crosswalks, and then of course the, the back part of that parking lot as well this summer. At Center Street, we'll be working on the parking lot renovation out there and we're doing the majority of that as it, as it heads towards towards where, high, where the road comes between the high school um, and Center Street. Uh, and that will again kick off right here at the beginning of, of, uh, of summer. At Ridge Road, uh, we're working on roofing renovations. Uh, we've revisited this. We did do a, some of the roofs at Ridge Road in the phase one project, and that roof has just not held up. So we're, we're tackling that this summer. Uh, we do have to do that roof in two parts because it's an old foam roof system that uh, it's too much square footage to get done one, in one summer. So we'll be tackling two thirds of that roof um, this summer. At Gardner Road, we have a transformer replacement um, we'll be doing. Uh, main entrance, secured main entrance uh, scope of work. We'll be taking out the old old glass and, and hollow metal frame window between the uh, vestibule and the main office and replacing that. And we will be uh, doing roofing renovations there as well. And then at all of these schools this upcoming summer, we'll be um, implementing the uh, blue light safety system. Uh, that's the uh, alert system um, for, for any danger uh, in Big Flat Center Street, Ridge Road and Gardner Road. Next summer, we'll return to this project and complete the roofing at Ridge Road as well as wrap up some site work. We're doing uh, the parking lot there as well. Um, and then we have a major uh, site work project at the bus garage, uh, replacing just about all of their pavement, um, doing a boiler, new boiler system in the bus garage, as well as paving the Sarah Street entrance coming from uh, Thorn Street. So to wrap up the overall referendum, this first referendum, um, we've got a lot, a lot of work still left to do. It feels like we've done a lot already, but we do still have two strong summers. Um, and at this point, we're, we're feeling that we'll, we'll be able to meet our end dates. There's a, there's, there's a lot to get done though. So this summer is gonna be our biggest test to tell us whether we're able to keep on pace for uh, September of, of 2022 for, for turnover of all spaces. Um, with that, I guess, thank you uh, for having me to speak, give you guys an update. I'll turn it over to uh, Jeff Robbins to talk about a future referendum. Before we turn it over, does anybody have any questions on the, on the current work that's been done? I have a question. Can you just clarify the blue light safety system that you referred to? I'm not, is, so, is, are those like the blue sort of safety pull boxes you see, or is it? Can you just describe a little bit more what that is? I'm, for it's some reason, actually, I'm not recalling. There is one right there. It's actually intended to be if there's an intruder in the building or anything like that, and you're in an assembly space. So I think at the high school, there's, they've been implemented uh, through another project in the auditorium, the pool, some of the gyms, some of the louder areas that if they might not hear uh, the announcements or anything like that, okay. that they, they alert people to get to safety. Okay, and it is tied into the uh, intrusion uh, detection system, day automation system. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Christmas, uh, uh, it's a little different than a college campus blue light system with the pull boxes. Yeah. This is more about visual alert. Um, if something were happened on any of our campuses, active situations, that that strobe would go off. It's blue. It's basically indicating that we need to take shelter, cover, or protection at that point. That's helpful. Thanks. Thank you.
now the real work for the future <laughs> begins again. So uh, it, for the board, uh, not every member of the board was on the board at the time in 2017, uh, in 2016 when we started this process, but you can see from 2016, 2017, it's taken that long to go through one project. That's why now we are starting to get into our next project with the culmination, probably three or four more years down the road of a final project before the board. So I'd like to turn this portion over um, to Jeff Robbins, who is principal consultant for Hunt, Ar Hunt Engineer, Architects and Surveyors, uh, who is also located here in the district. Okay, thanks, Sam. So uh, we've been asked to kind of look at what the next phase might uh, look like for you from a planning perspective. So we, we basically roughed out um, a couple of schedules. And before we get into that, though, I want to look at what the process would be. So first of all, we'd want to look at, you know, what are the outstanding needs of the district? And if we recall, in 2015, we started the process with a building condition survey and identified all the, the shortcomings and needs. Closer, whoa. Okay, how's that? That better? Okay, so in 2015, we went through a building condition survey process and the current project knocked off um, quite a bit of that work, but there's still a lot of remaining items that there just wasn't funding for to do. So we would start by evaluating that and then also bringing our team through and doing a um, facility assessment of maybe new things that have aged out in the last five years. Things that maybe, um, you know, are just at the end of their useful life now that didn't show up five years ago. So we'd recommend we'd start with, with that process and then look at, um, you know, what that scope could look like. And then also evaluate your educational space needs. And, you know, we went through several studies in the past about, you know, the space utilization of the district, how you're organized, um, how you're using your current space, and if there's, there's needs beyond that. So that would be an exercise we would recommend we go through again at some level. Evaluate, you know, some of the ideas before, what your current desires are as a district, what you want to look like, and merge that into, you know, physical needs that you have also. And then, you know, look at how that would break down by building. So we look at, look at it globally and then look at it by building and consider several things, right? Schedule uh, aid of the scope and available aid. So there's, there's different ways we look at it is the state aids your building at a certain rate, each building independently, and you've used that aid a good chunk of it, um, it resets every five years. So, you know, this has been basically a five-year uh, plan for that you've been implementing. We'd be looking at the next five years. And again, you would look at a phased implementation. So just like right now, you're doing a certain amount of work this year and next and so forth, we would look at a similar arrangement going forward to maximize your state aid. So that would be part of that um, planning process. And then, of course, um, there's some schedule options on how you can get there. And, and that's our next slides here, of what um, we've looked at. Now, I want to really point out this is really a draft and kind of looking at the different milestones and activities that would occur in a planning of a project. So the first one we have here is assuming um, a December vote, December of 21. OK, and we see that is, is pretty aggressive and an expedited schedule. So um, it all starts with, you know, what I had mentioned there about evaluating your needs. That would happen right away. We would we would be digging into that right away and then come to you with a board workshop sometime in July. OK, is what we would plan. And then from there, there would be a series of um, further development look at the finances, um, look at the aid, and then present um, some more detail to you in August, and then further present that in, in September. And then at that September date, you would pre pretty much have to give a thumbs up to the scope of the project to hit December. 
that begins a, the seeker process. And for those of you who might not know, the seeker is a state environmental quality review act. And any project you do, you have to review it for those purposes. And depending on the scope would depend on how lengthy that process is, but typically it can be done in 30 days. So that's kind of worked into here and that's a legal obligation. So ultimately to hit December in October, the board would have to make a final or on an official vote on the project for the proposition and the seeker determination to allow for a December vote, okay? And then the other things in there in between, you, you have to do some legal notices and things. Okay, the alternative schedule we put in there basically um, puts that vote date out till February. So we, we put it out two months. And the only other thing we've inserted is a um, preliminary review to SED to confirm some of the aidability. And this becomes more and more important depending on what the scope of the project ends up being. But if you have additions, um, the state wants to see a preliminary review and that could be done before the referendum or it could be done after the referendum. Legally, you can do it either way, but it informs your aid. So if, we, if it, it's done after the referendum, you, you have to make some assumptions about what that aid would be. Okay, we would do the calculation ourselves. We would, you know, give you um, our best review of that. And then the financial review would be based on that. Okay, um, and we would be very conservative about that aid. But if you want an official determination from SED, you really need to insert some time. And the reality is we don't know how long they will take. This sets aside 10 weeks, but you know, it's been anywhere from six weeks to 30 weeks for that process. And that's why sometimes we don't do it before the referendum because there's no guarantee it'll get done by them. Um, this last year, they completely postponed preliminary reviews. They didn't do them because of other things with COVID. So it, everything, all those got postponed. They didn't take action on any of them. So you just kind of to work through that. So that's something that we have to decide. And this isn't anything that needs to be decided now. I would think it would be something that would be discussed further in a board workshop or a retreat where we can talk about the positives and negatives of different vote dates. And of course, it could be beyond this. If you wanted to go to March or, or um, May of 22 or December of 22, you always have that choice. Um, the thing to realize is from these vote dates, minimally, it's about a year and a half till you begin construction. Okay, that, that's the least amount of time for that first phase to get going, to get through a design, SED review, bid, and begin construction. So, uh, uh, um, you know, early 22, late 21 really puts construction at the earliest, summer of 23. Okay, and then it'd be phased out probably at least another four years to till uh, 27 or so. Yeah, and if I can add there, Jeff, um, as you heard, summer of 23 would be that sort of timeline. That's what matches up with summer of 22, ending our, our project, the first full project, yep. and then doing closeout over the winter, getting ready for the next summer. So that is what you truly want to try to do. And the reason being is we have a lot of local companies working on our jobs and they did a wonderful job in the bid environment. Well, when they know they're going to stay in another area, we also potentially can reap a benefit from that down the road too. So the more we really hunker down and dig into this, that's going to be ultimately what could potentially be beneficial for the district, as we said, during our process, uh, we went out and we were supposed to have, I believe, a 1.89% tax levy associated with this first project. Currently, throughout all the funding, there has been no tax levy for this project and we are going down. So that's because of several factors, interest rates, bidding structure, interest rates are still down right now. So if we really try to do the best financial plan for the district, 
time is of the essence to make sure before anything really starts to hit school districts or municipalities that this is really that timeline. And that's why I would ask the board to commit to either the 21st, 22nd, uh, sorry, 21st, yeah. 22nd of July or the 20, I think it's the 27th or 28th or 29th of July. And this will be an administrative board discussion along with our uh, architect as well as our construction manager at this point. Just a quick question. I know the last time we did the referendum, the, the, the referendum, we did it in October because we were trying to time it so we would be in a favorable bidding window and things like that. So I, 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 are we worried about that again this time? Or you know, is there an advantage from that standpoint to push to do this in, in December versus February or even pushing it to December? Do we, do we miss a window? No, uh, I think you're good with the December. You know, um, it's really, there's really no way to hit October at this point. Right. Okay. But December is a, a good timeline. You know, um, that, that I believe gives you a phase one bid in early winter of 23, which is, which is what we'd be looking for. Which is actually when we rebid and we got a very favorable. Yeah. Result. Right. Yeah. So, okay. you know, it wouldn't be a, a huge project, but it would be that that first phase to get something going and and get rolling. And then we would roll pretty much the following year with another bid project and so forth. Okay. So okay. I and I I mean, there's a lot of question about the market right now. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think your timeline is very good. You've bid all your work. You got ahead of what's going on right now. And it gives time for that to get sorted out so that when you want to bid in 23, skipping 22 is a good idea <laughs> from a bidding perspective. Especially if it's lumber. <laughs> yeah. So I think, I think it, it fits very nicely. Yeah. Okay. And now with that said, delaying it till 22 does run the risk of, of, of hitting that early winter of 23 bid. So once you get past December, it does get tougher to hit the good bid window. Okay. And that's one of the things we would talk about in uh, the July meeting. I can tell you already, Mike and I have had some discussions that, that preferably we wanna hit and try to keep with what we've been doing that December window so that we can hit that sort of September, October bid window the following because we actually felt very favorable to that and it gave us time to gear up for that construction in the next quarter and the following summer, which we really need to hit. Okay. So are we picking a workshop date tonight? Well, after this, we need to just okay. make sure we're all set. I just need those, yeah. those, it's basically those five dates. That's all we had on the presentation, just to kind of give you an idea of what it would look like for planning. It's it's amazing that we're back here again. Right? <laughs> it, that, that went like, so fast. You know, it's great. Yeah. 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 Yes. Other questions for Jeff for the district? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if the board could look at their calendar right now, we do have one more little brief report. It's on the education, the key thing that we do. Uh, but what happens is I'd like to narrow in on that date so that we can get started on this timeline as soon as possible. So the dates are July 21. These would be evening meetings, roughly about, what do you say, Jeff, four hours? Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. I mean, completely evening or like late, would we t talk about doing it like late afternoon into the evening? Um, I would say you start at four o'clock, okay. uh, four to eight. Uh, if we get done earlier, obviously we'd have a uh, dinner for everybody, but it would be a working dinner as well. Yeah. 
Uh, the f first date would be the 21st. We'd like to look at. And then the 22nd, which is a Thursday night. It's a Wednesday and Thursday. The other three dates are the 27th, which is a Tuesday, Wednesday the 28th, and Thursday the 29th. I'd prefer to do it, if possible, as early as possible, that 21st, if we can settle upon it. I just, I don't know what everybody's plans are. Yeah, I I, I cannot the 28th or 29th. Okay, so. so. But 27th, 21st, 22nd, I can do all three of those days. We can go, who who wants to go next? 21st. Do a show of hands. <laughs> How many people are good on 21st? <laughs> 22nd. I'll pick 22nd. 22nd. Got your date. I forgot. I, I, I do want to recognize we do have Kevin Adams. Yeah. Kevin, are you okay on the 22nd? Good. There That's go. our date. July 22nd. I want to thank you all. We will get that on the board calendar. Uh, we'll bring a draft of next year's board calendar to the board meeting. Uh, in, I keep wanting to say January. I don't want to go back. That's for sure. So in June, thank you all for such a speedy selection. <laughs> that never happens. Jeff, are you all set with that then? Yes. Thank you. We'll go ahead and plan that up. Yep. And at last, I just want to turn it over real quick as we talk about some of the instructional happenings here in the district. <laughs> Uh, we are happy to report we have kept up with our plan of returning those people uh, at, in the order and priority that we have to get back to four days in person. And we know we have individuals now transferring back in the district. Uh, we are having those individuals, like we said, on remote, but I want to give Tony the chance to give an update on that. Some of our other plans and discussions that we are having around reopening. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, some quick items just uh, for your radar. Um, we did welcome back about 300 students over two different phases from remote uh, in-person instruction over the last uh, several weeks in two different phases. Uh, big bundle the first time and just recently 30 more this past um, Monday. So um, it's good news as more students move to that in-person four days a week. We do still have about 600 students on remote throughout the district. So not a small chunk by any means, but as usual, our teachers and staff are addressing their needs wonderfully and working forward to the end of the school year. Um, when we talk about the end of the school year, I don't wanna lose sight that just like every other event this year, things have to be rethought. And uh, not only the instructional models and the delivery, that, that hasn't changed. I want to make sure people keep in mind, we still have teachers, many of our teachers, trying to address the multitude of students both in front of them and um, on a remote at the same time and taking lessons from years of experience and having to redo them. But on top of that, we come to the activities like graduation, as Tom spoke about earlier, fourth grade, our moving up days, our field day or fun day activities, um, you know, these, these perennial events that have a lot of culture to them and meaning to them for our students that have to be rethought. So we have many of people involved in from our facilities, our building principals, uh, my office, and uh, of course our teachers and, and, and staff in the buildings trying to come up with new ways to continue these traditions. And it's no easy task. So kudos to them for continuing to look at those um, aspects of our work toward, as the end of the year to really finish off the year with that social emotional strong piece for our students to, to leave this school year behind in a positive way and to move forward to next school year. In that light, uh, looking to next school year, we are trying uh, starting to um, canvas and send out um, Inf uh, questions about reflection of the school year. What are aspects of our academics, our instructional delivery, our student learning that we should continue and getting input from our, our staff, our instructional staff on those aspects and to look over as instructional leaders, how we reform and relook at next school year. Tom has mentioned the five day model, uh, barring any changes and whatever guidance we might receive at whatever date, we still continue to move forward, at least reflect on what's been working and what we can do better in our system, uh, given the current situations. This opportunity has definitely catapulted us into a 21st century model of instructional delivery. And I know there's many a teacher that want to continue with that. And we look to continue uh, with some of those practices. Um, so not only collecting information, looking at next school year from stakeholder groups, mainly right now, the, the teaching groups, uh, instructional folks, but also um, looking at um, next school year, we, 
We do have an opportunity. I want to make sure the board is aware of Kelly Squires and her team have been working. Pathways used to host two classrooms, uh, many classrooms in the in, uh, county um, that um, were for pre-K students um, that address students with disabilities. Uh, Pathways, uh, for, for a number of reasons, are no longer offering those services. Um, Kelly and her team have been putting together a application to put in to host two of those classrooms in our district so we can support those uh, horse heads kids that uh, need that extra support whether it be OT their speech or interventions from, or from the county through their PT um, we're looking at a, it's called an integrated classroom it's a co-teach model um, servicing students and the related services and um, we do currently have many of these students already that attending our pre-k program our UPK uh, this would be a different grant source if we get the application approved by the state through the county and uh, would definitely be a, a great thing to continue on to make sure students in the pre-K get what they need. Uh, in addition, we're looking at a 1212 classroom at our pre-K level, which would really assist in uh, those early interventions and with students with disabilities that have some needs that rather than not having that, we can offer that in-house. So that's an application process that our team has been working through. We're hopeful we'll hear back from the state sometime in June. And we'll have good news at our board, next board meeting about how we're moving forward to offer that opportunity for to our kids. So looking forward to that the next school year as well as any kind of reopening. And um, that's the nutshell. That's all I got. Thank you. Yes. This question, and but first, I think um, as you noted, it's I commend the district and and everyone that worked hard to be able to resume the four day a week schooling and then on top of that to return i think you said about 300 students from fully remote to in person which i think is just um really important i just wanted to you said there were still 600 students on fully remote and uh does that 600 reflect students who have chosen to remain in that status or were there any who wanted to return but we were unable to accommodate because of space limitations good question to my knowledge we have not turned anybody away that has been enrolled with our district, has been enrolled and has been 100% remote to bring them back. Yeah. We've yeah. had some hiccups when it's come to trying to, our, our facilities and transportation, every single kid, uh, everything was filtered through, you know, my office to ensure we had the proper desks and we had the transportation needs before we re-entered. We do have a, a list that is now created as we get calls from families that say they want to now come back from 100% remote enrolled in the district and want to enter into the four day a week. We make sure they contact me. We go through a process to ensure there's a desk, the teacher has a space in their classroom, and transportation, if needed, it can be accommodated. So those are few and far between at this point. Yeah. But no one was turned away in those first two movements. Okay, that's great. I just wanted to make sure I understood the status of the 600, but the fact that we were able to, for those enrolled and yeah. who expressed the desire to return, we were able to accommodate that. I think that's fantastic. So mm -hmm. thanks for all the hard work on that. Okay. And, and I think that's the key point that we also need to make is those that have been enrolled with us the whole year. We are seeing some that wish to come back from charter schools, home schools, or private schools right now because they may not be getting the same opportunity. We have always stated that those students will have to come back at remote at this point, uh, and that is for the remainder of the year. Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next, um, just a quick update. Uh, really, I just want to thank everybody for coming out yesterday for, for the budget vote. Um, it was definitely a successful day. So thank you for everybody who did. Um, and I also want to um, congratulate uh, both Mr. Johnson and our newest board member, who will be joining us in July, Mr. Kevin Adams. So uh, Kevin will take his seat in, in July when we have our, our organizational meeting that will happen the beginning of July. So again, thank you for everybody who came out. And uh, we were happy to have the live voting back in place. And um, all the feedback that I heard throughout the day um, was very complimentary as far as the organizational um, aspects of the day, you know, the signage, the... Um, the amount of people that were on site to be able to help and to or were, were able to direct. So I know it takes a village to make all that happen. Uh, so thank you for everybody who worked behind the scenes to make it a, a, a very successful day too. So thank you for that. And uh, we don't, do not have an audit committee report for this month, but I'll turn it over to Mr. Johnson for the policy committee report. 
Thank you. Um, <clears throat> on May 4th, the policy committee met to review our existing policies on equivalence and instruction, uh, instructional and staff materials, organization of instruction, curriculum development, curriculum guides and course outlines, and basic instructional program uh, with regard to organization of instruction, curriculum development, and basic instructional program. We have uh, changes and recommended that are recommended for first reading tonight. Uh, we decided to refer the equivalents and instructional and staff materials for legal review, and we tabled the curriculum guides and course outlines. Um, that's where our substantial discussions were. Um, we also, um, I don't think there's any discussion on our second readings tonight, organization chart, school building administration, development of regulations and district guides, and student objectives and instructional goals, and there were no substantial go to the order items. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have our finance items for action. Uh, can I have a motion, please? So moved. Um, so we have seven point or seven point oh two, all the way through seven point two one. Are there any comments or questions on any of these? Just a correction. That's eight point two to eight point two one. The what? We're on seven. Oh, sorry. Right, we're still, we're in. Do I need to refresh? I thought I did refresh. Okay. Mine says eight, too. Mine says seven. Okay, let's Finance just... is usually seven. Finance is usually seven. Mine says eight. Okay, if everybody could just real quick. Go up to, you see at the top where it says board docs? Mm -hmm. See the little circle? Yep. Please click that. Oh my gosh, now it says eight. What happened? And then click regular business meeting. We probably had to rearrange some of it. So what happened is if you opened oh. it before we came out of the executive session, Be that's just a refresh to get the current one. That's so. because the capital project got moved into its own section yes. versus part of the superintendent report. Yeah, so it's okay. a formal record. So right. I apologize. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So we have section eight, 8.01 through 8.21. Um, any questions or discussion on any of these items? Warren? Miss Bazzetti, could I have you please go to the mic just because we're on TV? <laughs> Sorry. There's a red light. His... Tony. Tony. Okay. Ted. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Just, okay. Um, so the Keystone Cooperative Network, it's similar to other cooperatives we've approved in the past um, where, you know, public entities such as us can take advantage of, of the, the, the biddings that they've done through this cooperative network. Um, this particular network has been reviewed by our attorney to make sure it meets all of our, our policy requirements for procurement and, and bidding requirements. So it does conform to everything that we would look for if we were to do bids independently as a school district. Uh, so we are able to take advantage of the of the products we can purchase through here um, and the pricing that they can offer. Um, right now, we are looking at this to buy some um, additional athletic equipment that's needed to outfit the stadium. Might as well stay there. I have yeah, one I'm other question. <laughs> so on 8.19 on the... Tyler Technologies GPS service. Mm -hmm. um, could you explain what we get for that? And then the second part of the question is, 
is the fee that we're paying, is that an annual fee or is it a one-time fee to get us up and running? Okay, um, so the Tyler Technologies uh, bus GPS agreement, um, this is for uh, the initiative we had talked about in budget development last year to purchase a bus GPS system, uh, primarily to gain the advantage of having like a parent app or a parent portal uh, so our parents Parents can enroll in this app and be able to have live up-to-date information on where's, where's my kid's bus, is it running late, um, things of that nature, and give us um, a better ease of communication with communicating with parents uh, for kids on a particular bus. Um, so this is the agreement um, to enroll in that service. It does tie in with the new bus routing software that we purchased a few years ago. So the two softwares will talk and connect to each other. So the routes in the system will connect into this GPS system um, and have live up-to-date information that way. Um, the GPS system obviously will also have benefits for our bus drivers to have um, a GPS system on the buses to assist with um, changes in routes and things of that nature. Um, as well as features to track the kids as they load our bus and feature to track the kids as they um, unload on our bus. Um, as far as the fees, um, a lot of the cost is as a one-time upfront cost as far as the purchase of the equipment needed for, um, needed for each of our buses. The, the tab, there's gonna be a tablet installed on each bus um, for the GPS system. There's a one-time cost of installation and a one-time cost of training. Um, and then there's an annual fee um, for the um, for the software service. And if I can add, what this does is from time to time, we can also monitor where the bus is turning, where the bus isn't, and look for efficiencies in transportation as well as safety and drop-offs, uh, as well as the integration between the tablets there. You pick up a student, you know exactly who's on your bus as well. So it's a heightened safety program that schools across the nation have had a tendency to move towards because it gives you actual real-time data. So as far as the, the equipment purchase, uh, we have funds allocated in the current budget um, to purchase some of that equipment and we carried over some of the money into the 21-22 budget to continue uh, to, to buy all the equipment that we needed. And this is aidable, correct? Yep. Which is a 100% aided as well, which is the other benefit because it's in the transportation. Yep, it was a, it's a separate process. I had to actually uh, submit an application to the state for aid on this type of equipment, and that's been approved. Okay, I, I'm all in on it. I just wanted no, to know fine. what <laughs> what it was. And then so the the fee that's in that contract is that that's not for equipment purchases at this point. That's to get it up and running. Then is the equipment that equipment is in there. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yep. All, and the training. It's, a, it's and all inclusive. That year yep. one is an all inclusive amount of all the equipment we need to buy the training and things of that nature. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, is there, you mentioned an app for parents, mm -hmm. is there a cost that the parents have to pay associated with that? No. And um, 8.14, the stop loss of the rules, I know there's a discussion about that mm -hmm. in terms of the level of stop yep. loss. Yep, so we are not recommending a change in the threshold. We want to remain at the 275,000. Um, our rates came in favorable, uh, pre, pretty much flat with what we've been paying in the current year. Um, the claims we've been seeing, you know, we haven't been receiving the amount of payment we have in a typical year. We haven't had those high claimants. Um, so the there's really no need, um, you know, for a usage perspective or a monetary perspective to, to change the, the threshold at this point. Any other comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor say aye of uh, 8.02 through 8.21. Aye. aye. All those in favor and all those opposed, nay. And any abstentions? Okay, thank you.
Next up, we have our personnel items for action. We only have the HR recommendations 9.02. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Any comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. And any abstentions? <coughs> Moving on to our miscellaneous items for action. We have 10.02 through 10.07. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay? I will be opposing um, 10.03. Okay. School calendar. There was 10.03. Yep. And any abstentions? Okay. Item 11, our board policies for second reading requiring an action tonight. We have 11.01 .01 through 11.04. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. Any abstentions? Okay, and then we're moving on to 12, which is our board policies first reading, no action at 12.01 through 12.04. Any comments or questions for the policy committee on any of these? Okay, they'll be up for vote at the next meeting. Moving on to item 13, our board member comments. I'll open it up to the floor for any comments anybody has. Dan. <laughs> Microphone number. It might not be turned on. The red light's on. We do have more getting ready to be ordered, so they have a permanent board set. So. They, ha they have a time limit. So our board meetings can only be an hour, so, so we make sure we have the microphones. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to comment. I wanted to thank the athletic department for the uh, signing event. We held for the students. Uh, and I think it was really great. And I think it was great. Thanks. Any other comments? Okay, so I'm, uh, I'd like to motion to adjourn. We're gonna go back into executive session, but then we will not be coming back to public session after that. So can I have a motion to adjourn to executive? So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. And any abstentions? Okay, thank you. Have a great evening in on our live stream at the end of our budget presentations and annual election. This is the May 19th regular Board of Education meeting of the Horsehead Central School District. Again, thank you for your ongoing support and we look forward to seeing everybody as we commence the year with a final graduation in our district stadium. Thank you.